So the eccentricity of an orbit is going to determine how an object goes around the, um, the body that is being orbited. For example, at this focus right here, we're only showing one focus, but we're showing ellipses with varying levels of eccentricity. Uh, first of all, right here, if we were to have a perfect circle, a perfect orbit, that would be an eccentricity of zero, and an object would just go around, um, we'll say, the sun in a perfect circle. Most objects don't. Most orbits don't. Or, I'm sorry, most objects don't orbit in perfect circles. So this red ellipse right here. This would, you might say, have an eccentricity of 0 0.5. And again, its other focus would probably be over here somewhere, but we're not going to worry about it. Um, then we have this green orbit right here, where it has an eccentricity of 1. And this blue orbit right here has an eccentricity of 2. All these are going to make objects orbit the, we'll say, the sun differently. And I'll tell you what I mean in just a second. First of all, what is conic section? I mean, all orbits take the shape of a conic section. Well, if you take a cone, if you take a three-dimensional cone, if you were to cut a section out of it uh, at an angle, you would have an ellipse. Um, say we have just a, a cone right here, okay? Well, if you were to take a, I don't know, take a piece of um, paper and, and cut that, slice into it through that cone it would make an elliptical section through it that's what conic section means it just means it's 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 an ellipse okay so closed orbit what would closed orbits mean well the earth has a closed orbit now that means it goes around the sun and keeps staying in orbit anything with an eccentricity less than one is said to have a closed orbit. It will go around the sun, it will come back, and, um, and so forth. But in contrast, let's look at this blue curve right here, this, this, um, this hyperbola, you might say. This has what we call an open orbit. This is maybe, say, I don't know, a, a meteor or a comet or something like that, that is coming in so fast and gets whipped around the sun and gets sent back out this way, and it has so much energy that it's really never returning. The sun's gravity isn't enough to pull it back, and it has escape, an escape trajectory, or you might say an escape velocity, uh, that is greater than the sun's gravity, and so it won't come back in. So at any eccentricity greater than 1 is going to be um, this object just isn't coming back. Most objects that we're going to be caring about have an eccentricity of 1 or less, so they're going to be repeating going around the sun uh, on a regular basis. Did I miss anything here? No, if it's uh, yeah, if it's one or less, it's going to be coming back. Okay, this brings us to Kepler's second law of planetary motion. This is really just kind of conceptual. Uh, th there is an equation associated with it, but the second law of orbit is what is sometimes called the law of equal areas. That means, for a certain amount of time, let's say we have the sun right here, and you can see it's at one focus, and the other focus would be here somewhere. Uh, and we have the Earth, we'll say, going around it, going from here to here, and then going from here to here. You can see clearly the Earth is at different distances from the sun. But, and I'm getting to the real point here, but the point here is that in an equal amount of time, we'll say a month, that planet will, we'll say, sweep out the, an equal amount of area. What I mean is this area right here, as the Earth sweeps through that, moves from here to here over the course of a month. If we take that same amount of time over here, 30, 30 days, okay, even though it's closer, it's going to be moving actually faster, such that the area that it sweeps out is going to be exactly equal. The same amount of time means the same amount of area swept out. This is really because of angular momentum being conserved. No, we didn't talk about that very much. Um, but you can see over here, this is actually a really extreme example of it happening. We'll say from here to here, we have this comet, okay, and it's 
going around and then we'll say that's one month and from here to here that's one month as well well clearly the very different distances from the Sun but same amount of time means the same amount of area is swept out so all this in here is going to be the exact same area we can sum this up in this equation at any two points of an object around the body that is orbiting the velocity that point one times the radius or distance from this, that, that object one is going to be equal to velocity two times the radius or distance that object is from the Sun two. This will come in handy for us a little bit later on. Let's look at example 12.7. We all know that the Earth's orbit around the Sun is in the shape of an ellipse. And at aphelion, we're going to call this RA, the, um, the distance is 152 uh, million kilometers. Now I'm going to make this in scientific notation. It's going to be 1.52 times 10 to the sixth kilometers, which already I'm going to have to change because we have to have it in meters. So that's going to be 1.52 times 10 to the, if we want meters, that means we're going to have to, have to um, multiply it by 1,000, so, so 10 to the ninth meters. There's a thousand meters in a kilometer and that bumps up our uh, exponent by three spaces. Okay, at perihelion, our P, radius of perihelion, that's one point, uh, 147 million kilometers, or we could write it as 1.47, let's just convert it right to meters, times 10 to the ninth meters. Okay, and so it, oh darn it, I don't want to do that. Oh well, I'll just have to keep that funky looking M the way that it is. And um, let's say, let's see, the velocity at perihelion equals 30,300 meters per second. That should say meters per second right up here. So the question is, what is the speed at aphelion V? A. Now, if we want to draw this, we can. All right. Now, this is greatly exaggerated. Remember, Earth's orbit is actually very close to a uh, to a circle, although it's not a perfect circle. Actually, I'll make this the sun right here, and we'll call this R P and this R A. Perihelion and aphelion. And here, the velocity at perihelion is 30,300 meters per second. Question is, what is the velocity at aphelion? Okay, clearly different distances, um, but we should be able to find this fairly easily. In fact, if we step back, we should be able to use this equation right here. V1 R1 equals V2 R2. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So, oops, there we go. <clears throat> I'm write this in black. Oops, that's what we're solving for. We don't know that. So, velocity at perihelion times radius at perihelion equals velocity at aphelion times a radius of aphelion. And if we're solving for velocity at aphelion all the way out here, then we simply have to divide by radius at aphelion. Why am I trying to squeeze all this stuff into this little box here? I have this whole screen. Oh gosh. Uh, VPRP equals VARA. Well, let's just divide by RA. Velocity at perihelion times the radius at perihelion divided by radius at aphelion equals velocity at aphelion. Let's simply plug and chuck. Velocity perihelion, that is 30,300 meters per second times our radius at perihelion, that is 
1.47 times 10 to the 9th meters divided by a radius at aphelion 1.52 times 10 to the 9th meters. And that should give us an answer equals velocity at aphelion. So velocity at aphelion, as the Earth the furthest distance from the Sun, is 29,303 meters per second. So pretty fast, right? So you can see it's not a super exaggerated orbit because the uh, the velocity at aphelion and perihelion really aren't that much off. Maybe a thousand meters per second different. But um, it does show that the further out it is, it's going to be moving more slowly. The closer it is, and the perihelion is its closest point, it's going to be moving at its fastest at 30,300 meters per second. But this is our velocity at aphelion. All right, I think I'm going to wrap this up for now, and I'm going to um, I'm going to save example 12.8 and the rest of the notes for part three for another video, so I'll see you then.